thank you for joining this talk. Uh, the title of the talk is Using Multi-Model for Machine Learning Metadata. Uh, it's more of just a fun title, but uh, primarily what we'll be looking at is gathering metadata for your machine learning uh, experiments. And we'll kind of get more into that as we go through it. A quick intro on myself. My name is Chris Woodward. I am the developer relations engineer at OrangoDB, uh, specifically for the machine learning team. Uh, so that kind of like uh, mm, uh, that kind of means that uh, for me, I focus a lot on improving the training that we have uh, for developers uh, participating in development projects that might benefit new developers um, coming to OrangoDB and specifically with getting started with OrangoML. And uh, as, as you can kind of see, I'm also part of the community outreach part. Uh, I'm working with uh, community members on projects, uh, helping those community members get uh, eyes and help with their own projects that they're working on that might be related to Arango. Um, and so if you, you have any questions or you know, you'd like to see any sort of improvements with any of those areas, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me through my Twitter or probably a little bit faster response time if you reach out to, uh, to me on our community Slack, where I'm gonna be has a community Slack channel and I'm just chris.orangoDB there. Uh, okay, and so this talk will be going over one part of a uh, Arango ML series that we, we have done. Uh, where we introduce you to different parts of machine learning concepts, uh, but then also how you can use uh, various Arango ML tools uh, in, in your normal workflows. Today's talk will be this part two that I have highlighted here, where we'll just look at the basic workflow of uh, how you can incorporate using Arango M pipe to gather your metadata uh, through just maybe a, a, you know, it's a very simple uh, machine learning experiment for generating um, a lasso model using the UCI data setter. And, and we'll take a bit more at some of the specifics in just a moment. But um, well, the agenda for today is just gonna be a quick intro to OrangoDB. So if you're not familiar, this will just be a really, really quick uh, intro to what exactly OrangoDB is as a database. And then we'll take a look at OrangoML and the OrangoML pipeline specifically, focusing on the metadata gathering portion. And then we'll uh, set up, take a look a bit more at the uh, example that we're gonna go through. And then I actually have a Python uh, Jupyter notebook, or actually, I guess more appropriately, a Google Colab notebook um, that I'll share. You can run on your own as well. Uh, no sign up for downloading or anything like that uh, is necessary. Uh, and, and if you wanna go through that at the same time, then feel free to follow along. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, the OrangoDB introduction. So OrangoDB is uh, the first native beyond graph database. Um, and we were founded in 2015. We actually were initially founded in Cologne, Germany, uh, but we are now headquartered in San Francisco. We are an open source database under the Apache 2.0 license. And we also have an enterprise edition. Um, I don't know if you were here in the beginning of the call saying that uh, that 65 plus employees is rapidly growing right now. I would say we're, we're definitely uh, creeping up on the 85 plus if, if we haven't already gone past that. Uh, and actually on that note, for some that might be interested in this call, we are actively hiring Python developers now as well. So if you are in the market, definitely check out orangodb.com and in our job section um, as we are actively hiring for Python developers and, and a number of other positions, not just Python, but I know that that might be especially interesting to people in this call. Uh, well over 11 million downloads, 600 plus product installations that we know about, uh, and then uh, very, very proud of the 12,000 plus stargazers on GitHub. A lot of, uh, we'll say like bigger companies that have far fewer uh, stargazers. Uh, we are an open source product and, and our We've been built from the ground up with the community, and uh, the community has been a large uh, contributor to our success today. And, and we actually have a lot of people that now are full-time employees that started out as community members. Um, so that's that's something that we are always proud and, and is constantly growing. We're always always uh, surprised to see uh, that number keep continue growing. So if you do end up liking a wrong VDB, we would love a um, a star on GitHub. Okay. So this is gonna be the really quick, what is OrangoDB slide basically. Um, and so OrangoDB is a native multi-model database. 
And that means that we support multiple data models natively. And for instance, so we are, you can use a RongoDB as a document data model um, with fully uh, compliant JSON documents, uh, or you can use it as a key value store, uh, or you can kind of do a combination of all of these with an additional uh, edge collection, which defines the relationships uh, to be a graph data model. Uh, we are a scalable graph database as well. Um, this is something that uh, we're also fairly proud of and is a little unique in the graph world is that we are able to scale and we've been able to for, for quite a while now. Um, and so it's something that stays, stays useful in production um, and isn't just purely, um, yeah, isn't just purely for small single instance servers. Uh, we also have a built-in full text search engine we call a Rongo search. And this uh, it allows for full text federated information uh, retrieval and uh, with, comes along with uh, more advanced features and just like a full text index for things like um, uh, similarity and, and ranking for your uh, for your text data and comes with a number of, of additional features and, and I'm kind of like hesitating to dive too deep into that because that'll that's a that's a whole other topic on its own um, that we I personally really like talking about and if you are interested I've, I've made a number of videos and, and even recently did a project for the community using Arango search and our a geo JSON analyzer uh, we support iterative graph processing with Preggle uh, we have a number of built-in algorithms for Preggle, as well as a new experimental feature we're, we're working on for um, custom Preggle algorithms. Uh, and as we'll see in this talk, uh, we have GraphML and Analytics in our Arango ML suite of tools. Arango ML consists of a, a number of tools, not just this Arango pipe that we'll be looking at today. Um, it also includes a number of uh, adapters and integrations for things like NetworkX, DGL, and uh, recently we're working on embedding support. And we've actually uh, started development on a uh, NVIDIA Triton uh, embedding support. We're a part of the NVIDIA uh, inception program now as well. We're really excited about that. That's been a very recent thing. Um, and then uh, just uh, kind of moving on, uh, we also have a, a Kubernetes integration we call Kube Arango, which is the backbone for our managed service Oasis, which is our cloud managed platform. Um, and we, su we support the major providers, uh, Azure, Google Cloud, and AWS. And uh, that's something that is a fully managed ArangoDB database offering. And all of this uh, comes together with our unified query language, AQL. And uh, this is sort of the, the huge benefit that we see is that you get all of these. It's a single data source. Um, so it's a, you're, you're a single source of truth. It requires less developer knowledge to be able to use multiple uh, different data models and comes along with less performance and faster or less maintenance and faster performance. Um, so yeah, but if, if you are interested, uh, definitely, of course, we have a ton of more information available on our site. And I think I actually just covered all of these in that as well. Uh, JSON documents, uh, distributed, AQL is very SQL-like, uh, but we won't really cover that. And, and of course, we support full asset transactions, including multi-collection transactions. So uh, moving on to the Arango ML pipeline. Uh, Arango ML pipeline is a common and extensible metadata layer for machine learning pipelines, which allows data scientists and data ops to manage all information related to their ML pipeline in one place. That's kind of the like single sentence sort of elevator pitch for what we uh, hope to have achieved uh, with this Arango ML pipeline. And that's the, the whole idea is to offer this common metadata layer here that supports each step of your machine learning process. And so uh, we have some natural fits, which is you know storing the data and where you're getting your data from. But then as you actually start moving through the rest of your machine learning workflow, there are there, there is an important step that is, that is sometimes overlooked or is, is one of those challenges that I think a lot of companies are trying to solve. Um, and that's the you know, keeping keeping track of all of the important metadata that happens at each step. Um, this is important for things such as capturing lineage information. You know, which data sets were for used for which thing, um, for which which experiment. Um, the same thing with audit information. Uh, you know, where has this data been? What what processes have touched this data? 
And uh, then, of course, things like performance and, and gathering statistics for each step of the process to be able to eventually compare them. And, and then, of course, that also informs the model serving policy. So uh, based on all of this information that we've gathered for the various different experiments, uh, which model is going to be best to serve in production? And uh, you would make that maybe based on the performance information. Uh, this was also, this, this idea was actually kind of born out of uh, our CTO now, uh, Jurg Schad, who had some experience in working with, uh, in, a, in a medical environment where they needed to be able to um, account for patient information and which processes had it been used in and, and really be able to draw a, a trail throughout every, every process in, in every department, you know, who touched what and, and be able to account for it and, and potentially even, you know, remove that information at the user's request. Um, and that's something that we think having this uh, common metadata layer can support. And so uh, with the Rongo ML pipeline, there's kind of two sides to it. One's the one we're gonna really look at today, that's a Rongo pipe, tracks metadata and does things like such as this entity registration. So along every step, you can register things like data sets, feature sets, model metadata, and uh, a full view of the actual experiment or the run is what we refer to it as. So everything that was involved in that experiment all connected through a graph data model. And the really important part for, for us was that this needed to be something that if you already had a notebook or, or just a, a process in place, this should be something that you can take small bits of, of code from a library and plop into that. And it shouldn't need to interrupt any of it. And it needs to support multiple models. This is where the really the nice flexibility part comes with using a, a NoSQL database is that it doesn't really matter what you're using to develop your model uh, because you can, you can decide what to store and, and how to store um, just by passing through that information as an object. And we'll take a look at kind of what I mean by that in the actual notebook. Uh, and then on the other side, we have the Arango Pipe Admin. Uh, it comes with a front end admin UI and it is used for provisioning projects, which we'll take a, we'll, we'll see a real sneak peek of that in the notebook and users as well. We'll also see that. Um, and this is for definitely more for the ML ops, DevOps side of things to be able to manage resources and be able to, for instance, if a user says, hey, I want to uh, run this, this model again, I need to test it for um, you know, just performance considerations. Maybe the data starts to not perform as well or the model starts to not perform as well due to data reasons. Um, I wanna start back basically where this model left off and, and see if I can improve it um, is for, for one example. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll be focusing on more just the metadata gathering today. So the example that we're looking at is going to be developing a lasso re regression model using the California housing data set provided originally by UCI. Um, the main thing that we'll be looking to do throughout this is log that metadata throughout the entire experiment. And then uh, we'll also be kind of stopping to take a look at what this looks like just in the OrangoDB UI, because that's something that is, is nice about all of this is that Orango Pipe is developed to provision these database resources. And so as the machine learning uh, engineer that is going through this, uh, they, have, they have access to a fully functional database. Um, and on the DevOps side, they were able to provision and, and limit security for that user based on their setup. Uh, and so um, just to get a quick look at some of the information in the data set, it includes information for house configuration and location, median house values, ages, uh, information about the population, uh, number of households, and then medium, median income for the area. And we'll also have a look at that in the notebook. And I will stop right there because I'm sure I am going 100 miles an hour here. So make sure we don't have any questions. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll pause here as well. Anybody have any questions so far before we move on to the notebook actually? And I'll go ahead and uh, paste this link in the chat. Okay, all right, so everything is looking good. So I will go ahead and continue on. And so, okay, 
So this is the notebook we'll be running. And so with this series, the, it, the, each notebook was kind of written in two parts. The first part being uh, an introduction to a machine learning concept. And then we actually get down to the part that we'll be looking at today is more of this, this actual model building. So this one focused on the model building side and explaining some of that. So definitely feel free to give that a read if you are uh, getting started with this. And uh, with anything like this, feel free to also uh, give me any feedback you have. The one thing we will need to run in this section is just getting the actual data we're working with. So I'm gonna take a drink. Oh, and I see it says no runtime specified. Try to give it that. Should we actually get connected up here? Interesting. Uh, okay. So uh, I think we did get this, let's make sure, okay. So, okay, so here's a quick uh, look at the data and uh, in this data set. And okay, so the first part that we do, I'll go ahead and get this going. Uh, this is just a really basic uh, gathering the requirements. Python Arango is our Python driver. It's one of our two community drivers actually. Um, and they both actually live in the uh, GitHub community, the, the ArangoDB community uh, GitHub org. We have a number of community supported projects that live there. And so if you have anything that you're developing for Arango, definitely reach out to me if you'd like to live it there, have it live there. And, and that's a nice way to get some more development eyes on it. We bring in Arango pipe, and then we'll use pandas, pyaml, and Splurn, and then JSON to get some data into JSON. Okay. So um, this part, we're gonna, what this is actually doing, we're gonna run it. What this is actually doing is setting up a, <clears throat> a database using the Arango admin API. So we're kind of playing admin and um, an admin and engineer, just because it's a tutorial notebook and we kind of need access to both ends for that. Um, I will say actually as well, if you are running this on your own, please take note of this at the bottom. If for some reason this fails, uh, Sometimes what can happen is it'll create the database and then um, in the middle of the creation process, it'll try and move on. So it doesn't quite have access to that resource. It's, we, have a, we have a tutorial deployment set up that's set up a, a little bit differently than what you would normally have on your own. Um, and so this is, this is operating off of that tutorial deployment. And so sometimes it can be uh, behave a little different, but usually just rerunning the code block is all that's necessary there. But uh, so, a uh, real quick look at the lines that we have here. We're getting the admin interface, setting up a configuration file that we see here. Um, this is just the endpoint that we want to connect to to generate that database for us. And uh, then we actually, this is the AP that we'll use throughout most of the uh, rest of the notebook for actually logging some of the information. And then as the admin, I set up the project info. So once you run this code block, it does immediately give you an instance to connect to and it gives you the database password and username here. So feel free to run that on your own and you can play around with it as well. And so by running that code block, you see we only have access to the one database that it created. And this database will only last just a few hours. And uh, the only thing so far that's set up is it has sort of scaffolded out our, um, our, our project for everything that Arango pipe will need. Or, or could make use of. And the one thing it has done is added this project document um, with our name of housing price estimate project. It also started up a graph definition. So uh, for ArangoDB, we have two types of documents. The project here is actually just a node or just a like vertex, just a, a regular document. And then we also have this concept of uh, edges. And the edges are the things that connect the nodes or vertices to each other. And as we continue through this, you'll see we add some edges at different steps that really help build out our graph definition. Uh, oh, that's not right. Oh. Uh, okay. Did someone have a question? I thought I heard something. Okay, I'll well, continue moving on and uh, okay, so, so this is just our initial setup step um, and we've registered a project. Now onto the actual model building portion. Uh, we don't really do any of the like tests to figure out which is gonna be the best model or anything like that. And this one, because the focus was on the metadata gathering, 
So we're just assuming the lasso progression model is the best for our use case. Uh, and if you want, you can print out C again, get another quick look at this data. And then the first thing we want to do is go, OK, we're using this data set. So you uh, want to register that data set in our project. And so we've provided it some information describing the data set. And then we've called our register data set method. And that immediately shows up in data sets. Yep. So here's our data set document that we've added. And um, this will actually even, I believe, show up in our graphs for us, though there's not much connecting them at the moment. Add the collection name just to see what we've got going on here. Yeah, so two unconnected nodes, not really much of a graph yet. And we will continue on to registering our feature set. So looking back at our data, we might want to register information that actually is describing the, the features of our data. And so that's what we'll do in this step. We actually log the median house value, because that's a bit more useful for later on. And uh, we indicate that we did that here as well, because we can describe data types uh, independently. And that's, that's kind of a nice thing that we wanted to call out here is that uh, even if you have something that you want to just describe what you've done to the data, you're able to do that uh, to whatever whatever fits your need. Um, and then this actually also registers this feature set, but connects the feature set to our data set because they are definitely linked and should be described as so. So if we look at our feature set, here we go. So this is actually an edge collection. So we see here it's saying uh, this connects from our feature set to our data set. And then we'll see what that looks like. Uh, and here's the feature set that we registered. Um, and so this feature set has the values, their data types, and then we can see the log transformed median house value. Um, so if we look at this in the graph, I'll actually load the full graph as well. So we can still kind of see that that We've got, we've got a connection now in the feature set to data set, but our project still isn't quite connected. And we'll connect that when we actually log the full run. Uh, logging the run uh, is just a way to sort of tie everything together. You know, we've, we, will, we will have taken the effort to register all these independent things. And then once we actually do the model building, then we register that run. Um, and so for, for this part, we're just uh, getting our training and testing values here. We're just using Scilearn through all of this uh, just to keep things simple. And now we'll actually do the model development. And throughout this as well, we can begin uh, capturing statistics and seeing how well our model performed. And you see we're getting our MSE values printed out here um, to see, see how well that is doing. I'll leave that up to you to to improve upon if you like, uh, but uh, that'll be good enough for us. And one thing that's also really important when uh, gathering this metadata is of course, gathering the params that you used for the model building. And so this is something that you can uh, you know, make use of and we'll see where I register that. And uh, one thing that I, I also personally like a lot is this ability right here, which is because we're, we're just, we're able to log whatever we want to log as a part of our metadata, um, we can actually get this notebook that we're working on right now. And uh, we this is just converting that to text that we can store in our uh, database. So if we actually wanted to pick back up where, where this notebook left off, we could get this, this literal notebook and do so, um, which is really nice. And then this goes back to that whole metadata of, of being able to see everything that touched any part of your data and being able to get access to the actual notebook that did that would be really, really useful. Okay, and so this step, uh, what this is doing is actually now uh, logging the model and the model itself. So we've given it a name, a task type, and then the actual notebook, which is our uh, converted notebook that we have up here. And then we register again by calling ap.registerModel. We register that model with our model info and link it to our project. So now, uh, actually, I don't think the project's just linked yet, but we've given it the tag for the associated project. Um, I think we can actually load this and get a better look. Yeah, so we've linked our model and our project, but our data sets and feature sets are still separated from 
uh, from our graph. And uh, we'll get to that point when we actually do the log, uh, do log the run. Uh, okay, so we've actually kind of, we've just kind of like blown through the whole thing, which is, this is a simple, simple um, model building exercise, but throughout all of this, uh, the important steps are, there's nothing that actually changes about the model building. Um, and so you do that and then just keep the info. Um, and this, this hopefully uh, is a convenient way to do that because all you're doing is adding uh, lines at each individual step that, that allow you to do that in a connected, meaningful way. And so, uh, and so this next part here is doing the log run. So the log run is, uh, everything is, it gets a unique identifier. Every time we add a new document, anything like data set, feature set, anything like that uh, has its own a unique identifier. And that's true with the um, run ID as well. This is a universal, universally unique ID. Um, and so we gather all the IDs, basically the keys we, we call them in a wrong DB uh, and provide those as a part of the raw, uh, run information. And so this is what really begins to link everything together. So now if we finally come back to our UI, show everything, we can see that we now have a fully connected graph starting from our project that leads to our model. And that model connects to the run that was used to develop that model. And then all of the associated things that were involved in that. So for example, we could look at I believe our performance here um, and looking at our MSEs that we did for that run. And so as you go through, you can begin to evaluate these things and uh, use them to reproduce or, or iterate over, uh, you know, because of course uh, the machine learning is very iterative. It's, it's never this easy. Um, so, uh, this is the sort of information that you can use to uh, just jumpstart the next project or the next iteration. And uh, then for the DevOps side of things is that they, if they ever uh, need to query or look up uh, the, you know, wherever data was, was touched at, um, on the admin side of things, they can run AQL queries to quickly find uh, these connected components. And, um, be able to, to give back reports and, and show accountability for, for the various parts of it. Uh, and then the, the final thing, uh, this is optional as well. This, uh, this kind of ties into our goal of making this a very collaborative experience. So at the end of this, you can save this Arango pipe configuration that we generated at the very beginning and share that with a team member. And that team member can now maybe pick up the next leg of the race. Like, you know, if it wasn't all up to you to do every single part of this, uh, which I think is pretty normal, uh, then you can actually share this. And that graph continues building out with your teammates' work. Um, and they could have their own, you know, credentials and, and, and anything that we wanted to show happening um, for this entire experiment or, or even just associated experiments that we want to live under the same project. Uh, and that's it. So, and if you'd like to see this working, uh, we did some really like uh, basic examples, but just showing it working with these, these frameworks. So like TensorFlow, PyTorch, HyperOpt, MLflow, uh, we, for at least the TensorFlow and PyTorch ones, we took just their getting started notebooks they have and showed how you could just drop in a Rongo pipe to those. Um, and so that's a really great way to see how you can just use it with these uh, different libraries and frameworks. And um, and yeah, that's basically that's basically it for the notebook. Um, that was uh, hopefully enough to to get you interested or or, or see where that could go. Uh, and this is just one tool in our Arango ML suite of tools that we're always working on. And so, sort of the conclusion or wrap up part here would just be that if you are interested in some of those tools, definitely check out our repository. All of this is open source. Uh, so this is GitHub.com/ArangoML. And uh, then if you're just interested in learning more about ArangoDB, we have a learn portal with a ton of tutorials. Uh, that also actually links to our interactive tutorials repository. Um, and this is a repository full of these Google Colab notebooks. They all are the same way. You don't have to sign up for anything. You get access to an ArangoDB instance with your real data that you're free to play around with. Uh, those instances just last a couple of hours. Um, 
And uh, then also with that, if there's anybody here that is actively using uh, Jupyter or, you know, and willing basically to put that on a Google Colab notebook, uh, if you have an interesting use case in the machine learning world that we can uh, somehow so show some tie-in to a RongoDB or just a cool RongoDB notebook, we are doing a contest right now through like mid-October uh, where you can win a custom set of Apple AirPods, say a RongoDB community on them, and also get a swag box with uh, like a RongoDB shirt and stickers and, and all sorts of goodies. Um, Is it a part of Hacktoberfest? Uh, it is not a part of Hacktoberfest, but actually we did do Hacktoberfest last year. Last year, uh, we did like a knowledge graph thing, uh, and we actually had a, uh, a repo for that as well. And, and we, I, I believe we have all, in, all, all uh, intention to do Hacktoberfest again this year. Mm -hmm.